Hey folks, Michael here, and today we are in my kitchen to talk about one-pot meals, which is putting food on the table without spending all evening in the kitchen. Because whether it's managing pots and pans or cleaning them up when you're done, the biggest bummer in daily cooking is the dishes. They take up space on the stove, they crowd your kitchen if it's small, and they take time and scrubbing to completely seal the deal. So I'm talking here today about one-pot meals, and I'm gonna show you four different ways that you can do it, and how to take advantage of a few rules to make variety the spice of your home cooking. So the pots that I'm gonna show you today are the sheet pan, the Dutch oven, or you can just use any basic pot that has a lid, uh, the saute pan, and a pressure cooker, or as many of you may have at home, an instant pot. They all have their specific uses, and I'm gonna to explain to you the strengths of each one. So I'm going to get started here with these chicken thighs for the uh, saute pan meal. I just need to brown these. Uh, we're going to get to this momentarily, but in the interest of time, I want to go ahead and put these in to get brown. So I'm going to put them skin side down in a hot pan so we can get some color on them and not have to stand around and wait. So there we go. Okay, so let's get to our first the sheet pan. Now, the sheet pan is really about roasting, okay? There's no liquid, pretty straightforward plate of food, a meat, and two vegetables. It's not a gorgeous meal, but it's an easy and it's a tasty one. It's good for getting food on the table and maybe having some leftovers. Pardon me if that's loud. It's loud for me. I don't know if it's loud for you. But you're going to be picking your protein, picking your vegetables, uh, and picking a starch or another vegetable, and you're going to roast it all together for 20 or 30 minutes. Now, the things that you choose are gonna have to cook in roughly the same amount of time. So let's look at a general 20 minute rule. You're going to need at least 20 minutes to cook any bite-sized vegetable, even at 500 degrees. So your above ground vegetables, the things that you might see growing, things like broccoli or cauliflower or peppers or Brussels sprouts, they cook in about 20 minutes at 500 degrees when they're cut into bite-sized pieces like this. They're also gonna cook in 30 to 35 minutes at 375, and that's gonna be important a little later on in the conversation. Your below ground vegetables, things you don't see growing, like beets, carrots, sweet potatoes, potatoes, they also cook in about 20 minutes at 500 when they're cut into a smaller dice, about a half an inch. They cut, they'll then 30 to 35 minutes for 375. So then your meats, chicken, chunked chicken, inch, inch and a half, it cooks in about the same amount of time as your above ground veggies, 20 minutes, 500 degrees. Same could apply for bite-sized chunks of sausages, for example. So the 20 minute rule means that if you cut your meat and your vegetables into bite size, you can be in and out of the oven in 20 minutes. Now, if you want something like a whole chicken thigh or a whole chicken breast, it's gonna take a lower temperature and a little more time. And that's where you get into the 375 for more like 30 to 35 minutes. If you're doing whole, probably best to do it skinless. The skin's not gonna really get brown or crisp in this scenario, but if you're not committed wholly to a one pot, you can brown the skin in another pan first before you add that uh, to the sheet pan. Beef and pork, gonna cook more quickly than chicken because they cook to a lower temperature. Something like fish, you can also bake for 15 minutes, but you can broil that for six to eight minutes. So if you are doing beef or pork or fish, you're gonna use a two-stage cooking approach. You're gonna start your vegetables, get them partially cooked through, and then add your quicker cooking piece of meat like fish or steak, even under the broiler to finish it all off. Now those cubes of pork or beef, they're gonna take 10 or 15 minutes because they're only going to 135 degrees as opposed to chicken's 160. So what I've got here is cubes of chicken, broccoli, and red bell peppers. I've oiled them already, I've seasoned them with salt and pepper. You can add all kinds of things. You can add dried herbs, lemon juice, paprika, other spices, whatever you like. Now they're gonna go into the oven for 500 degrees for about 20 minutes. Now this half sheet pan is gonna serve two people pretty well, okay? It's maybe some leftovers. A three quarter sheet pan if you're doing three or four people, don't buy a full sheet pan. It will not fit in your home oven. There's a lot of variety you can do here, but it is a pretty basic plate of food. Probably no Instagram awards here. So the basic rules are choose your ingredients, decide on your protein, whether it's whole or cut into chunks, and then preheat your oven either to 375 or 500. Prep your vegetables so they're the right size, and then you're going to season it all, oil it, throw it on the sheet pan, and put it in the oven two stages if you need to. 
So next, we've got the saute pan. Now I opt for this if I'm not relying so much on liquid or longer braising times. That would be the Dutch oven. So here, I've got my chicken thighs, and I've also got some carrots and some leeks. You can see I've already seasoned and I'm browning the chicken, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna remove the chicken and add the sliced leeks and saute them for a few minutes before I go ahead and add it all back together. Now while I'm doing this, we're gonna get to the Dutch oven meal. Now the Dutch oven meal is good for meals that need a little bit more liquid, braises for tougher pieces of meat, even some vegetables that might benefit from longer cooking times. What I'm doing today is some collard greens, which I've been braising already for about 15 minutes, and I'm gonna add sausages directly on top of the pot, on top of the greens to use the steam from their cooking to cook the sausages for about 15 minutes. So first I sauteed my onions and my aromatics, things like garlic, dried fruit, spices, seasoning. And then I added my chopped greens to it and the liquid and they've been cooking for about 15 minutes. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to open it up and I'm gonna add the sausages and then I'm gonna cook that for another 15 minutes. Now you can open up a Dutch oven and check whenever you want. Now if you're doing something like a beef roast, you can brown it in the pot first before you add the aromatics and pull it out just like we did with this. And then you'll do your onion and garlic thing, you'll pop in the beef, you'll add the liquid halfway up the meat, and then you'll simmer it and cover it. Now pot roast can take a couple of hours, and a good place to do that is in the oven at 350 or so. So keep the, it keeps the, the heat really even rather than concentrated on the bottom of the pot. Now partway through you can add some vegetables like greens or sweet potatoes until they're done. And if you find that your beef is done before your vegetables are, you can pull out your beef and let it rest on a plate while the vegetables finish. If you want to add something pretty quick cooking like spinach or peas, you're just going to add those at the very end for about two or three minutes. And if you're doing that and you pulled the beef out, you can also slice the beef if it needs rewarming and add it back to the pot with your quicker cooking vegetables. Now, I've been cooking the leeks and carrots here. Um, I might have cooked them a little longer if you weren't here but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add this chicken stock and I'm going to nestle these back on top and I'm gonna cook them for about 30 minutes. Super similar concept to the Dutch oven. I just don't need as long of a cook time or as much liquid um, and it's an easier piece of equipment to work with. So the basics for both of these are you heat your pan, you season and you brown your meat, you remove it, you add your vegetables, um, you season, you stir it, you cook, put in the meat, put in the liquid, simmer and let it cook. Now a pot roast can take two to three hours, like I said, so adding the chunks of carrots and sweet potatoes for the last 20 to 30 minutes is always a good idea. Pull the meat if the veg is, uh, is not done yet and add the quick cooking vegetables in the last couple of minutes. So finally, we're gonna talk about the Instant Pot or the pressure cooker. Now this is great for soups and stews, chicken and rice, it's good for chili. It's good for some of the same kinds of dishes you might do in a one pot braise, but in a much shorter period of time. Um, but unlike the Dutch oven, I'm not going to open it and close it uh, to add things. It's all gonna be in there, uh, in it all at once, and, and sealed until it's done. You do have the option to brown foods in the bottom of an Instant Pot or a pressure cooker before you close it up, just like you do here, which does help to develop a deeper flavor. Now, there are a lot of good five or six ingredient dishes for the pressure cooker. I'm doing a five, ingredient Colombian chicken and potato soup that I really like. It's got some chicken thigh meat. It's got potatoes. It's got whole tomatoes. It's got onions and it's got bay leaf. I'm going to season that all up with some salt and I'm going to mix it together right in the pot. I'm going to pressure cook this on high for about 25 minutes and it's done. Now you can do the same thing with beef stew, you can do beef, onions, celery, carrots, maybe a little tomato or tomato juice, some salt. I do recommend browning beef in the same pot first. And then when you add your other ingredients, you can use that liquid to scrape the bottom of the pan clean before sealing and cook that for another 35 minutes. So again, the basics of the Instant Pot or the pressure cooker is all at once. You're gonna add your meat, brown it first if you want to, add your vegetables, season it, and then add any liquid, seal it up. Now the timing does depend on the meat. It's gonna be shorter for chicken, it's gonna be longer for beef. You're gonna find a lot of recipes out there to use as a guide. Chicken is more like 20 to 25 minutes. Beef is more like 30 to 35 minutes for those like, you know, tougher stew-like meats. 
So those are your four options for one pot cooking. Because in as little as 25 to 30 minutes, you can have dinner on the table with just one thing to clean, right? So as with anything, start with what you saw here. Experiment by replacing ingredients with something that you like or you want to try. It's going to take some practice, but more than a recipe, learning a technique will give you access to many meals rather than one. So right here, I've got my sausages cooking. Uh-oh, it's a little bit high. Um, I've got my chicken cooking with my leeks and my carrots. I've got my uh, sheet pan going in the oven with my chicken and my broccoli and my peppers, and I'm about to seal up my Colombian stew. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Tell me what your favorite one pot meal is for you or your family, and enjoy your meal, and I will see you next time.